I think I'm gonna try a bowl myself. This really looks good. And the smell, man. You smell all that chili powder and all that rich goodness. Gotta get in your chili fix before summer comes. Look at that. We got our nice white beans you can see in there. You can see our black beans. And I like a little bit of cheddar cheese on top of mine and some diced onions. But there you have it. Venison chili. Good for any time of the year. I'm Scott Boslovich, and I'm bringing this to you today. Scott Bozlovich, and we'll be making venison chili today. First thing we're going to do is we're going to brown up the, the venison, which is 30% pork mixed in. We'll put a little olive oil in there. Just a splash so that the venison doesn't stick. Remember when you're thawing your venison to, to either pull it out the day before and thaw it in the refrigerator is the best way. Otherwise in lukewarm water for a short time until it's nice and tender and soft. We're going to put this on a medium high. And we'll start browning that up and in the meantime we can cut the vegetables. A little bit of onion, dice that up and a nice not too small a dice, a nice medium dice. You want to be able to see the vegetables in your chili, but not have them be disappear. We'll cut up a, we'll cut up a whole onion. Nice medium dice. I like to. We'll just put them in the bowl here until our meat's browned. Wash our celery off. I know you're supposed to eat so many bushels of dirt before you die, but I'd rather not eat extra. That dirt doesn't add too much flavor. A little bit maybe, but not too much. We're just going to quickly chop this up. I have four ribs of four ribs from the head of a celery. And I have a pound and a half of the venison mixture. Let's check that. Starting to brown a little bit. And we'll bump that up just a touch. We're going to cut all the vegetables now so they're all ready to go. We're going to cut our green pepper and the easiest way to do that is if you just come straight down with your knife and you miss the little seed pod inside, you just kind of go right around and do four cuts and I have a nice clean pepper ready to go. I always suggest that we clean as we go so we don't have a huge mess to clean up at the end of making dinner. All right, we're gonna do a medium dice on the peppers. Now I always like making this right after we come in from hunting because it warms you up. Get to taste what the deer tastes like. All right, as our meat browns, we'll get out some of our chili powders. I like to mix up the chili spices. Use the chili 3000 and the regular chili powder. I mix them together to give me a 
the flavor that I like. You obviously can use any kind of chili powder you'd like, but I prefer the Penzi ones. We're gonna put thyme in. We're gonna put cumin seed in. Ground. We're gonna use a little bit of beef base. Pepper. And seasoned salt. We're starting to brown here pretty nice. A couple more minutes and we'll be all ready to add the vegetables. I like doing everything all in the same pot so that we don't so that we don't get a whole bunch of different dirty dishes. And the little bit of liquid that comes out, it's really not fat, it's really more water. Venison is so lean, clean and healthy for you. You don't get a lot of fat, so I don't need to bother straining a little bit of liquid out of there. It's gonna add flavor into back into the chili. Now we'll add the vegetables. We have the onions, celery, and the green peppers. We got the onions and the green peppers and the celery in there that we cut up earlier. And we'll just start to slowly saute that. We want to, we want them so that they're just starting to get soft. A couple more minutes here, and we'll be able to start adding seasoning and seasoning to it. I like to saute the seasoning to. So it releases all of its flavors. If you have a lot of meat from your deer, don't feel feel free to experiment. Don't be afraid. Um, there's a lot of a lot of our recipes you could use for chicken or fish or beef. But I suggest trying them at least three times with the venison. There, our vegetables are just starting to get tender. We'll start adding a little bit of chili powder to it. Start bring up the flavor slowly so that. You don't make it too hot. A tablespoon of the regular chili powder. A tablespoon of the Penzi's 3000 chili powder. Cumin. Put a tablespoon, a teaspoon of cumin in. A teaspoon at a time. And you want to rub, and you want to rub that to release all the flavor. We're gonna put some black pepper in. A little bit of Penzi spicy season salt. Let's put a teaspoon of that in. A little too much. This is one of my favorites. It adds good seasoning and a little bit of spice. Not too much, just perfect. I like to put a little, just a little bit of taco seasoning in to round it off. And some dark chili powder. And put a tablespoon of dark chili powder in too. I just measure it out in my hand that way I make sure that I don't dump too much in the pot at once. And we're just starting off with the seasonings. We'll probably have to add more later to your taste. If you like your chili really spicy or if you like it mild, I kind of like it in the middle of the road myself. That way I don't burn out my company. There you can, you can smell the chili powder already cooking in it. It's starting, it's starting to smell pretty good. Stir it up good. And we're gonna start adding the canned goods. We'll add a can of diced tomatoes. We'll add half a can of tomato paste. So this is a six ounce can, so that would make it three ounces of tomato paste. We'll add a half a can of black beans with the, with the liquid in there. The liquid actually adds a lot of flavor. 
We'll add the whole can of chili beans, half a can of, of Great Northern beans with the liquid in there, and we're going to add a can of tomato sauce. We'll rinse the can out with about eight ounces of water, and we'll add that to it. Stir this up. It's still a little thick. You have to remember that this is going to cook for a good hour and a half, two hours, so that all the flavors melt together, the vegetables finish cooking. Um, we're going to actually add a little more seasoning down the road. But in the meantime, let's add a little bit of beer. We'll add half a can. We'll save half a can for us. How's that sound? I like to put a couple of spoons of beef base in it because it adds salt and it's going to make it taste beefy just like just like normal chili would be if you use beef. If you'd like to learn how to process meat, and check out our site. It'll teach you how to process your meat or it'll, you can link, it has links to other people that will help with your processing needs. Okay, we're gonna let this simmer. We're gonna make sure that it's on a, on a medium to low setting because we don't want it to burn. All right, our chili's been cooking for like an hour, hour and a half. And it looks like it's getting there. It looks like it's ready to eat. I think I'm gonna try a bowl myself. This really looks good. And the smell, man. You smell all that chili powder and all that rich goodness. Gotta get in your chili fix before summer comes. Look at that. We got our nice white beans you can see in there. You can see our black beans. And I like a little bit of cheddar cheese on top of mine and some diced onions. But there you have it. Venison chili, good for any time of the year. I'm Scott Bozlevich on Wild Things Show. Become a wild game cooking master by watching our professional chefs show us how to prepare outstanding wild game meals, desserts, and side dishes. Thanks for watching the Wild Things Show Cooking Wild Game. This is Rich McNutt. Enjoy. <laughs>